I, I really didn't find out about sports until I was much older than most kids. In fact, when I was growing up, when I heard people talking in second and 10, third and eight, I had no clue what that meant. I was actually in a high school band, school band. I was the slide trombone player. I was the guy that did halftime entertainment at halftime, marching in the band group. Fourth of July parades, playing my slide trombone. The only reason I got involved in sports is because everybody else was doing it. My cousins, my best friends. And I just went out one day and I tried and everything just kind of fell into place. When did you play football for Oklahoma State? Uh, from 70 to 73. Okay. How would you describe the team back then? It was an up and coming team. Uh, I, I think the class of 70 was kind of the start of a turnaround. And uh, I, I really was grateful for the, the, the players that they brought in, the, the fellow athletes that I ended up playing with. It was a great group. Uh, we kind of, I, I think we set set the motion in place for a, a turn in our in our, our program. You started out at Oklahoma State as a fullback, correct? I did. I re recruited out of high school as a, as a running back. Uh, actually, I was an All-American running uh, running back in high school. But I also played uh, linebacker as well. Uh, I did a little bit of everything. I was a kicker, field goal uh, placement guy. So it, when they asked me to change the linebacker, I, I, I didn't hesitate. Uh, I thought it would be a, a great change for me, and luckily I did. Uh, I enjoyed the two years that I played, and I, I had fun with the group that I was playing with. So it worked out. Why do you say luckily that you switched positions? Well, I think it allowed me to uh, grow as a player. And I think it allowed me to be drafted in the NFL as well. I don't know if I could have, would have been drafted as a running back, but as a linebacker, I think it, it, it assisted me in getting drafted. And you said you were also a kicker at Oklahoma State? Or well, I, I, I practiced, but I didn't play in games or anything. In fact, I kind of walk away from that because Eddie Garrett, one of my fellow teammates, he was a kicker as well. And, and Eddie was really good. So I just left it to Eddie and there was a guy by the name of Uwe Proust at the time too, that was uh, one of those sidewinder kickers. And he was quite effective and I couldn't compete with him. What do you think that says about your athleticism though, that you were practicing as a kicker, came in recruited as a running back and then ended your career here as a linebacker? I think that was just a, a matter of being exposed to different sports growing up. Uh, I played basketball, I played baseball, uh, did a little bit of everything. And of course, being an active child growing up, I, I was able to uh, grow and, and, and experience different types of sports. And I think the hand-eye coordination, you know, all those things helped me to become a, a player, an athlete. This might seem like an obvious question, but you played all these different sports. What was your favorite? The linebacker was, was my favorite. But of the sports, because you, I mean, you excelled oh. at football, but was it necessarily your favorite? No, no, not at all. Baseball was my favorite sport. I Why really love baseball. Why not pursue it? Well, football was, was the sport to play. And I just kind of, uh, a little story. I actually, I, I really didn't find out about sports until I was much older than most kids. In fact, when I was growing up, when I heard people talking in second and 10, third and eight, I had no clue what that meant. I was actually in a high school band, school band. I was the slide trombone player. I was the guy that did halftime entertainment at halftime, marching in the band group. Fourth of July parades, playing my slide trombone. The only reason I got involved in sports is because everybody else was doing it. My cousins, my best friends, and I just went out one day and I tried and everything just kind of fell into place. 
What year of high school was that, that you switched into football? I think I switched in the seventh grade when our schools in integrated. Did you stop playing trombone or were you still playing at the time? No, I stopped. I walked away from it. I, I picked up a trombone sometime later. I couldn't even get a sound out of the thing. And I thought I was quite good at, at one point in time. But yeah. So you, and you switched, you switched to football yeah. when you integrated. So yes. what, what was the additional challenge of having to play a new sport while also integrating into a new school during the 60s? Well, there, there were some times when it, it, it was, it was, it was a, a, a growing experience, actually. There was a little rift, I guess you would say. Uh, some guys felt threatened that a new person was coming in and take their positions. There were some on-field fights and that type of thing. Uh, yeah, it was, it was an experience. I'll just leave it at that. Bringing it back to Oklahoma State, what were you studying here when you were a student athlete? Well, I wanted to be a coach. So I was in arts and sciences at the time. And uh, with, with and taking classes in driver education as well. Some of the people that I, I kind of admired in, in school was my, my high school coach. I also uh, liked my driver instructor. And I thought that was fun to deal with kids, to, to teach them things as they were growing up. So becoming a teacher was on my bucket list, along with becoming a, a driver examiner. So those are the things I was interested in. How did you end up at Oklahoma State? I was recruited by uh, Oklahoma State, of course. And uh, I think uh, one of the things that was a, for me, was there was a college coach from my hometown that was uh, on staff. Coach Fred Hightower, and uh, being familiar with him gave me uh, kind of a comfort zone. And then, of course, when I visited the campus, the, some of the the, the uh, recruits, uh, we became friends, and I, I met them on other recruiting trips. So it was kind of uh, an easy decision for me to decide at Oklahoma State at that time. How would you describe your career here at OSU? I would describe my career as, as successful. Uh, I accomplished, other than getting my degree, I accomplished what I, I wanted to accomplish. Uh, I'm, I met a, a wonderful group of guys, enjoyed my experience playing at Oklahoma State, and uh, uh, friendships that I cherish to this day, I still uh, look forward to. What did you do after your playing career ended at Oklahoma State? Well, I, I started school with a young family. So uh, when I got drafted, it was an opportunity to take care of my family rather than take additional courses and, and, and stay in school another year uh, or two. I decided to uh, pursue the football uh, side of things. So it took me further and further away from, from my goal. You know, I went from being a small time, small town Texas uh, kid to being drafted by the Southern California Sun of the World Football League based out of Anaheim. And I was drafted by Miami. So I had a dilemma which, which path I wanted to choose. So I chose to go to Anaheim, uh, stayed there for two seasons, and then the team went belly up. So now I'm looking for employment again. And that's when uh, I went to Miami and I ended up getting cut there. And it went back to my hometown of Seguin, Texas. And I was looking for, for a job, right? And that's where the, 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 the drive for my degree uh, comes from. You know, you go and you, you interview for jobs and you didn't have the qualifications, you didn't have a degree and undertrained, over, over qualified, these types of things. So I ended up bouncing around more or less. And one of my best friends in, at Oklahoma State, James White, said it best. I didn't only go to Oklahoma State, I graduated from Oklahoma State. So in the back of my mind, that always stuck with me. I didn't graduate from Oklahoma State and I'd made that promise to my, mo my mom years ago. So that was one of the incentives for me to go back to school and finish up. 
When did you officially go back to school to finish your degree? Well, when I, when I, in the off season, when I was playing here in Canada, I went back to steel water and I took some courses, but I, I still didn't finish. So I decided to go back a year ago and then COVID or two years ago when COVID did, and that put everything on, on hold. So I finally made the, the right contacts and found out the, uh, the courses I needed to finish up on. And I decided to enroll and, and, and finish out my degree. When did you officially graduate? The 6th of uh, July, August, August. So very, have you received your diploma yet? I've been looking in the mail every day. How it's going to be two, two or three weeks, so I'm, I'm looking. How do you think it's going to feel when it arrives and you get to open it and look at it? You know, I, I feel a, a sense of completeness, if that makes any sense. Uh, I've always, in the back of my mind, always had that wanting of finishing my degree. And now that it's here, it's just there's a feeling of calmness. It's a, feel, a feeling of accomplishment. It's a satisfaction it's, it's it's a number of things so uh, i'm looking forward to going to the mailbox and when i take it out uh, that's going to be a happy day in my life where are you going to put it i'm not sure i've been looking around though I, I will definitely i will definitely have a good spot for it and you have kids correct i do what do they think about you going back to school and finishing your degree well, they all uh, in, encouraged me to do that because I talked to to, 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 uh, to them individually. Uh, one of my daughters is a psychologist. One doctor's uh, one's a uh, educator in, in my hometown. My, my I've got four kids. Okay, uh, one's an educator, psychologist. Uh, one is got a degree in political science. So I've got three kids that are finished. The university degree and another one has is a lab technician so they're they're quite encouraging unfortunately i'm not the first one in my family to get a degree anymore that would have been a goal but i'm number four nothing wrong with being number four it's still <laughs> impressive that you went back and you finished oh yeah i want to backtrack a little bit so you were cut by miami how did you end up in the cfl Lee Snyder, Oklahoma State coach, was in Canada uh, when I got released by Miami. And John Payne, which is uh, another Oklahoma State uh, connection, he was the head coach here. And they contacted me and asked if I would be interested in coming to Canada and play. So uh, I came and I ended up uh, making the team and uh, played here five years. How did you like it? I loved it except for the winners. I loved it except for the winners. It's a different game, but it's a fun game. And I think the newness to the, of, of that particular uh, type of football is, was an added draw as well. It was something wild and different and exciting. And to learn it from ground zero was, was, was fun. How would you describe your career in the CFL? I think it was a, a learning period for me, a growing period for me as well. Because like I said, I, I learned a new game. Uh, totally different than anything I'd ever been ex exposed to. I met a great group of guys, as, as I did at Oklahoma State, as I did in the World Football League. Uh, made great friendships, and it provided me a, a life uh, to take care of my family. So I was quite grateful for that. You were inducted into the Saskatchewan Hall of Fame for your career in the CFL. Yeah. What yeah. did that recognition mean to you? It meant the world for me, to, to me. The Saskatchewan fans are, they're avid fans. They, 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 they're not, not hesitant in, in, in telling you their opinion of your play on the field. Everybody takes uh, pride in their team and they will stand by you, win or lose. So if you're playing poorly, they will let you know that. 
So what I try to do and what everybody should try to do is uh, play to the best abilities because here in Saskatchewan, they'll call you out on it and they'll let you know it. Where did you end up or what did you do after your career in the CFL ended? When my career here in Canada ended, I ended up going back to Austin, Texas, where I was living at the time. And I applied with the Texas Highway Patrol and was accepted to their, their, their school. So I ended up retiring officially and um, went to uh, training with, with, with the DPS and graduated with the class of 1982. Uh, when I was uh, positioned, they put me in Ryan College Station, which was, was fun because it was an Aggie town. Uh, got a chance to learn more about the Aggies and, and had a great time in that city. So uh, I worked for them for six and a half years and then decided to make a, another career change and i ended up moving to canada what brought you back to canada well well two things i i, I other than the weather that uh, canada has it, it was a, a fun place uh i was going to back to uh, an environment that i was familiar with but what triggered that move was uh law enforcement at that particular time was was it was getting pretty testy. Like when you take an oath to serve and protect, and then when you have uh, people that didn't respect or uh, fear the police, the person you were stopping out on, on the highway, there were sometimes uh, they had more firepower than you did. So after an encounter late one night, I put a person under arrest for impaired driving, and then all hell broke loose, right? So I end up at one point losing both of my, my weapons. And so we end up, you know, I, at one point I thought he had, he had my gun. So the next morning I woke up and I made a, a decision to maybe seek another career change. So I ended up moving back to Canada where I worked for Sask Energy Transgas, which is the natural gas distributor here. I worked for them for 25, 23 years, sorry. And I retired there from there in 2011, so. What have you been doing since then? Actually, I've been kind of having a little bit of fun. I have I have a group of guys I uh, get together with every uh, opportunity I can. We, get, we ride our motorcycles, we travel to different places. The road trips have been fun. Mind you, with COVID, the last couple of years, we haven't made any big trips. But we've gone to Radium Hot Springs. We've gone down to Sturgis prior to the rally. Uh, Montana, uh, in the Rockies, we've, we've done a few things. So it's been a, uh, a great experience to, to date. When was the last time you were here? I came back for a, a game. Uh, I think we played OU. So I treated a friend of mine that lives here to the experience of being in the stands for an OU game. He's an avid uh, football fan. He, he's now an avid OSU fan. He, he wants to buy season tickets. He wants to come to still, he, he loves the Cowboys, loves them. From that one game? From that one game. Was it the Bedlam 2021 game where they won? No, we lost. Oh. So and I can still see Baker Mayfield running down the field. But he's still, even after that, he still wants to come and see Oklahoma State play because he loved it that much. Oh, yes. That's amazing. Oh, yes. He's, he, he's, he wants to come back. We drove down for the game for that experience, and he wants to do that again. He doesn't want to fly. He wants to drive. From Saskatchewan? Mm-hmm. How long of a drive is that? Uh, two and a half days. That's that's a commitment. Yeah. That's a commitment. Yeah. What did he think of the whole tailgate experience? Because college sports in America are so unique to America. You don't see that in other countries. He, he We had a blast. He loved it so much. He, he, he talks to everybody about it. He was able to get a tour of the stadium. Of course, 
he met a number of the guys, uh, Professor Jacobson, he met him, he met some of my, my fellow teammates. We were all uh, down at the, uh, uh, on the strip, close to the strip, tailgating. He enjoyed it thoroughly and he's looking forward to going back. When do you think you'll be able to make it back down here? Well, it could be this next uh, season, more for game next season or this coming season. We do have the alumni where we the alumni weekend for a football game. There's the golf weekends in the spring, the spring game. Would you ever consider coming back for any of those events? Oh, absolutely, because I've, I've gone to a uh, spring game before the golf event. I've attended those in the past. It's just that the last couple of years with so many things going on with the, the restrictions on travel and that type of thing, it just hasn't worked out. But uh, yes. I'd, I'd love to do that again. Well, hopefully we can get you down here this season or in the spring, if not sooner. Well, I'm going to try. It's, it's just on my bucket list. That's awesome. Will you bring your friend back with you? Oh, yes. Love that. He, he's already volunteered that information to me. <laughs> when you go, I'm going with you. I love that. How much OSU gear do you, does your friend own? Do you know? He's got a cap. He's got three or four shirts. And he's got the pants, uh, sweatpants with OSU on it. Love that. Love that. Okay. What sports do you watch in Canada? Everything, every sport that you can watch there. Or what teams, I should say. What teams do you watch up there? Whoever's playing. I mean, I don't have a favorite team. I just like watching sports in general. Like, I even watch hockey, and I don't understand anything. I've been here forever and a day. I don't understand anything about hockey except the fighting part. And the only thing I know there is somebody's going to be in a penalty box. <laughs> the only sport I've ever seen that you can fight and still play rather than get tossed. It's the, it's the weirdest game. <laughs> but it's also entertaining. So who doesn't it, love a good hockey fight? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's entertaining. You see the guys quaffed in their hair before they drop the gloves and pummel each other to death but yeah it's it's different what's your favorite memory from your playing days here at osu nebraska tying us my junior year senior year i think we we played to tie that was my favorite memory why well because first of all they didn't beat us and they're they're lucky that they tied us because we were coming off the field one day and they were standing at the top of the ramp beaking the players right so that that was incentive for the guys that was coming off the field listening to those guys the nebraska corn huskers so we went out and we kind of we, we took it to them and they tied us to walk away with a tie they didn't beat us as they bragged about <laughs>